Subaru's boxy bad boy is back for 2014 with a more powerful engine, beefed up transmission, and more on-road performance cred. A Forester might not be your first pick for an exciting car to drive, but this version takes its breakfast with a turbocharged shot of Red Bull. Now entering its fourth generation, the Subaru Forester retains much of the same body styling shape that you'd probably remember from the previous generation. Despite that, it gets more chiseled body lines and character accents. Specific to the XT model, you get aggressive styling on the lower front fascia, chrome accents around the fog lights, and a mesh style grille, along with 18-inch alloy wheels specifically styled to the XT model. That's not the most important thing about this car though in terms of styling. What is, is the fact that when it first came around, it shared a lot of DNA with the WRX. That's not true anymore and neither are the styling characteristics they shared. Initially it had a big hood scoop. Fast forward to the second version and that hood scoop got toned down. Now with the most modern version, the hood scoop is gone completely, making this the most sleeper-esque Forester XT to date. The Forester's cabin feels an awful lot like the Impreza, which is disappointing when you consider the fact that the Impreza starts at about $10,000 less than this car costs here. Our test car starts at right around $29,000. Disappointingly, you don't get leather seats at that price level. You'll have to step it up to the nicer trim for that, but speaking of the seats, Subaru refers to them as sport seats and says that they're extra bolstered. Honestly, it'd be nice if it was actually a little bit more bolstered considering the car's performance credibility as the turbocharged model. There's nothing wrong with the cabin, but it does feel a little bit cheap. Part of that's because of the outdated head unit here in the center stack. And you can get a touchscreen, although you'll have to step up to the top trim model to get it. Speaking of practicality, there's plenty to be had here in the Forester. And while that's not specific to the XT model, you get about 35 cubic feet of cargo room with the rear seats up, and that goes all the way up to 75 feet if you fold them down. Rear seat space isn't bad either, with legroom at 42 inches, which is actually almost on par with sitting up front. While overall the cabin is very good, we do have a couple of major complaints. First of all, accessing the USB port where you would plug in an iPod or an iPhone or any kind of smartphone really is a pain because the tray that you find underneath takes up most of the space and you actually have to remove it just to access that port. Aside from that, accessing and looking through the information screen up here in the dashboard is also a little bit frustrating and confusing. It's easy to get through with these steering wheel mounted controls, but at the same time, customizing it and toggling through the information screens is a little bit confusing and difficult to understand. For 2014, the Subaru Forester XT comes with a two liter engine and that's actually the same motor as you would find in the Subaru BRZ. Of course, in this case, it's turbocharged and makes 250 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. It'd be really nice to get this car in a stick with that kind of performance credibility and power, but you haven't been able to for years. And in fact, the previous generation came with an automatic, so it really wasn't that exciting either. In this case, you can only get the XT with a continuously variable transmission. And while that might seem like a bummer, in fact, Subaru offers a high torque CVT specifically for the XT that makes it a lot more fun to drive. You get three driving modes. Most of the time, you'll leave it in intelligent mode, which leaves the RPMs low and saves gas. The EPA suggests you should be getting about 25 miles per gallon on average, although in our tests, we're only getting about 18. Granted, that probably has something to do with the other two driving modes. Those are sport and sport sharp. Progressively, as you can probably predict, sport mode puts the car in a higher rev range and helps keep it in its power band punch sport sharp mode and you go even farther in that rev range and the car hangs on to high RPMs and keeps you ready to rip around corners and ready to accelerate in a much more aggressive way. Apart from that, the car also gets a stiffer suspension and vented brakes that go farther towards bolstering its street credibility, which is interesting because the Forester XT actually started out with roots and heritage with the WRX. As we've said countless times before, one of the most common complaints with the CVT is the buzzy noise that it makes while you're driving. Surprisingly, this unit's actually very quiet and is actually fairly responsive. 
It's also worth mentioning that when you're not trying to rip around in this car with either the Sport or Sport Sharp modes, there's also an X mode. What that does is it alters the way that the engine and the gearing and the stability control handle the car to increase traction on slippery road surfaces and on steep grades. Our test car comes in the premium trim, which despite the name, actually isn't the top tier. That comes in at the Touring package. Now, our car, as I said before, costs just about $29,000, including delivery. Unfortunately, it neglects certain important things that buyers are likely going to want. Step up to the Touring trim, and you'll get important features like leather seating, a touch screen, and perhaps most importantly of all, safety features that drivers will undoubtedly want through a package that Subaru offers that includes keyless entry, touch unlocking, but also adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, pre-collision warning, and others. Even with the CVT and the slower 0-60 to 60 time, this car is still a hoot to drive, provided you can stomach the price.